Hello everyone and welcome. Hello everyone, welcome to the February 2019 2B20K tournament. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we're gonna be having our matches now. We are starting out with a match between Anakin Hokomoko and Top Cat with North Chilean G. It is going to be on a choice of Thornford, Cold Snap, or Shimmer Shore. And that is up to the players. Every round, each player is, or each team, is going to be determining what maps they play. Or to be more precise, is working on Smash Bros. rules. So one team chooses a map to not play, the next the other team chooses a map from whatever they were, whatever wasn't banned. So one team gets to ban, the other team has two has a pick one of two maps that were not banned. Fairly simple. And we'll be getting going once we get Anarchy Dokomoko or Topic and Earthling G to start actually setting that up. And at this point, I'm kind of excited because we haven't actually had a tournament with TV2 in a while, and also haven't had a tournament run by Aquanim in a while, which is very different. Normally, tournaments have been run by Shaman, who usually runs things in a slightly more, I guess, more casual friendly format. And Aquanim tends to be more of a higher competitive format, so it's a very different style of tournament. I do appreciate the Shaman having hosted when they did, but acknowledging now that Aquanim is the one hosting this tournament, so thank you Aquanim for hosting this tournament and setting up a very interesting and slightly different rule set for how maps work. Which is good, because the way it's been done before, it's usually either been one per round, which is always a little bit annoying, or it's... I guess usually one per round is the way it's done, yeah. Usually what happens is they have one for every round. Everyone in the same round plays the same map. Which means that the TO has a huge amount of responsibility in terms of determining maps that people actually enjoy, and that tends to cause problems. But this this way, if people don't want to play a particular map, they have two other maps to choose from. So that works. I, I like that. I think that's a great idea. Looks like we might be adding another team, though, because there are... Like I said, the two teams we have now, of course, there's also 400 mana 12, who will be fighting against Malric and Pet Turtle, along with Dying Throne with Sparkles, who will be initially fighting Jasper and Floris the 14th. And for reference, this is a round robin tournament. There are few enough teams that this will be round robin, hence why all the all the brackets are laid out already. No spoilers, it's just that's that's how round robin works. It doesn't really care about results or anything, it just cares about whether or not there's someone in the tournament, and everyone plays everyone at some point. So that's that's what we'll be likely be seeing, just because there are only six teams, or possibly seven, but definitely six. Definitely at least six. That's not a big deal when it comes to how this tends to work out. Hmm. So... Oh, North Chilean G is late. I've been informed, so I will instead go with 400, 400 mana 12 against Malric and Pet Turtle. Since apparently North Chilean G is not able to play at the moment. Thank you for letting me know that. That would have that would have wasted a lot of time. And it looks like we will be watching Manu 12 400 against Malric and T Pet Turtle on Cold Snap. So that is going to be... I'll be up in a couple minutes once we actually get them started up. It should be, it should be too hard, I think. And then, let's see what else is there. Cold, okay, let's just get going. First match for the day. Also, fair warning, I do have to leave for an appointment in about two and a half hours. I don't know if the tournament will last that long, but yeah, if we get on to about 9.30 or so UTC, then like 21.30, whatever, UTC, I will have to go, whether or not the tournament is done. Mind you, at the rate it will likely go, unless there's a bunch of tiebreakers or whatever, we probably will see the end of the tournament before I have to leave. But yeah, fair warning before we get started. This stream might end in a couple hours just because I have to get going. Or a little over a couple hours. But at any rate, we are about ready to get into the game proper, so just... Get 
it is going. So, we are on Cold Snap map, which really hasn't been shown all that much. Like, Cold Snap is not a map that we see very often, just because it's... Okay, it's not a map I see very often, because I don't cast a lot of large team games. Mind you, I haven't really seen it even in team game tournaments in a long time. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure what's happened to it. People just stopped playing it or what. It's one of those maps that it's kind of Delta Seas dryish. You have a flat area at the south side of the map. You have hilly areas in the north side of the map. And then this section in the center. The way often this map tends to work out is you'll have something like vehicles over the south side of the map. And then spiders or bots or whatever over the north or center. Now, if it's 3v3, you get this situation where you basically have three lanes. But 2v2 creates an interesting situation where, say, Malware and Pet Turtle have decided to separate as much as possible and just concentrate on focusing on securing each their half of the map. But sometimes you will see players try to focus together. We have like center and bottom or center and top as a way of trying to maintain control fairly well. But at this point, we are seeing Mana 12 and 400 also go for the kind of split scenario. So both players, both teams rather, are working their hardest to try to make sure that they have secured as much map control as possible. So... Mana 12 going for gunships, 400 going for cloaky bots on the south side of the map too. That's interesting. Pet Turtle going for the light vehicles, which is more what I would expect for the south side of the map. And spiders for Malric, which again, north side of the map, like I said, tends to be spidery. Although as it is, Mana 12 already starting out with a lot of blast wings, trying to see what they can do to harass out their opponents. Looks like Malric's more so trying to figure out scouting. I mean, setting up fleas everywhere, making sure that they have figured out where their opponents have started, because again, that was a full vertical start location. So at this point, neither team really knows where their opponents have spawned. It's reasonable to assume that their opponents have decided to start out in the corners, just because again, that provides the most control, or it's the easiest to provide control. But not necessarily, and at this point, Ford are actually not even going for heavy raiding. Going as much as they can for anti-raiding, starting out with a Reaver, getting a few glaives afterwards, but make sure they have that Reaver and Imp, or sorry, yeah, Imp just to make sure that they have gotten everything in case vehicles come in and start wrecking their face. So I like that. Very good preparation. At the same time, Mana 12 going in for a Locust. No, not really for preparation or anything. I mean, it will be useful a little bit against these fleas, especially given that they do have a much wider decloak radius than before. But overall, it's mostly just a matter of allowing for some of this harassment. Blastwing came in, already got rid of one of the Metal Extractors. The second Blastwing is coming in and not really managing to find too much in the way of Metal Extractors itself. So at this point... The Western team on the right... I wish I could switch this sometimes. Anyway, the Western team is definitely slightly behind the Eastern team as far as metal goes. But large part is going to come down to what happens in some of these fights. Like this Scorcher trying to raid in here, not able to do much. Although, to be fair, there's not a whole lot that can be done over the south side of the map. 400... I mean, they can take this lake a little bit. There's a couple metal extractors there. Five metal total. There's a bunch in back, though. I mean, really... Not a lot of map control is required. As long as this factory holds, as long as these units aren't being bypassed, it's not too difficult to to secure the areas in the center. However, if something does attack through the center, which is exactly what Mana 12 is trying to deal with right now with the Lotus, then it will be a lot harder to deal with because there are no factories in the center right now. There's nothing actually protecting the center from units just sneaking by. Or not much, anyway, just the Lotus now. And there certainly wasn't anything before, so it was definitely possible for teams to get around through the center, and at this point, it's still actually quite possible for the Eastern team to go in and just come through the center. I mean, we already see that we have a, have a glaive right here, just waiting, hanging around, just prepped to go in for 400. At the same time, though, like I said, Mana 12 400 have protected their center, so it will be a lot easier to raid for the Eastern team. But they don't look particularly keen on raiding right now, I mean, beyond the Blast Wings. And I guess this Locust coming in around just to see, make sure that there isn't anything being built up over the center, and there really isn't. At this point, Pet Turtle is deciding to expand a lot more to the south and a lot more into the back, whereas we don't see 400 having gone for these backward expansions, but they are going straight for the center. And I really like the way that 400 is doing this. I think the fact that 400 has very quickly, 400 and Mana 12 have very quickly taken the center of their side of the map is going to be a huge boon in the long term. It was a bit risky because they might have been raided early on, but they didn't get raided, so it worked out. Now at this point, the raiding coming around the back here, not only is this raiding quite devastating just for what it is, there's also the fact that it's putting a huge amount of pressure onto Pet Turtle, which will probably discourage them from attacking the center. And at this point, the center, like I said, is very easy to get to. We already have a Glaive here just in case as well. So the Eastern team is just making absolutely sure that the Western team cannot come in here and do much damage. 
So that's going to be the key thing, is the Western team can't do a lot of damage. That, why, is this, why is this blurry? Never. Anyway, if the Western team can't do a whole lot of damage, then that's, that's not much to be said about that, other than the Western team's not going to be able to do a whole lot of damage. Because the Western team, all they really have going for them right now is, well, I guess vehicles on a lake? Not really much, though, and actually coming in, a bunch of Ronin coming in. They, just sheer numbers, let alone the fact that Ronin are able to just weave around all the fencer shots, forcing the fencers to move and not fire. This south side is basically going to be taken by by the eastern team. That is going to be it for at least the southern side of the map. And like I said, the center, it's starting to get secured here. And I mean, this glaive could actually be doing quite a bit to stop these workers. It clearly hasn't spotted them. But as it stands, the Western team can't really come into the Eastern team's base in any meaningful fashion. I mean, there's some attempts to try to deal with this stuff. I'm a bit surprised we aren't seeing any Ravagers to help. Well, even Ravagers wouldn't help much. Scorchers would be the way to go to deal with this. But of course, the Reavers coming in here, making sure the Scorchers can't easily get rid of the Ronin. So overall, Pet Turtle is kind of in a tough spot. I mean, Scorcher is coming in here. It will be able to do a bit of damage. Get rid of one or two Ronin. Of course, going down to the Reaver again. So not much that can be done there. Man in 12. Coming in with the blast wing, and honestly, right now I'd kind of, I kind of expect a little bit of help coming in from Malric, but they're not coming in to save, to save the teammate. Petrol's on their own, losing their commander as well to that revenant. And now this Western team storage has gone down by 500. Their metal per second has gone down by four, and their main base is getting completely destroyed by this one locust. I was just hanging out here, didn't even do anything. The locust should not be able to be doing this much, but it is. It might even be able to get rid of the mason. The pickets are doing what they can to stop it. But it may not even matter. The Locust does ultimately go down, but that's at the same time that all the forces coming from 400 starting to break through the solar wall and just completely devastate everything Pet Turtle have built up. Malric trying to go for a counterattack and doing an okay job. Managing to get rid of a few metal extractors, get rid of that Lotus. Doing a bit of damage, but really it's not going to help all that much. Not at this one. I want Pet Turtle basically losing their entire base and can't do much about it. They do have a couple of... They have a Ravager coming up, which that's gonna be of some use, but it is too little too late. At the same time, the Glaze coming in here from 400 should be able to take out Malric Spiders without any issue. This Recluse is done. The Venom is the only thing that's causing any major slowdowns, and the Nimbus should be able to take out that Venom, or at least heavily discourage it from getting in there. But at this point, Pet Turtle has basically lost their base this entire game. Yeah, it's over. Pet Turtle knows it, and that's gonna be the Western team throwing in the... Or, yeah, Western team throwing it why is this not directional? This really should be directional. Anyway, Western team throws in the towel. Eastern team takes it. So that's Mana 12 and 400 getting their first win. Going up by one. And Malak and Pet Turtle now 0-1. Oh, let's see what else there is. So let's see how the North Chilean G game has started. And that wasn't very long. So we should be able to drop into that. Yeah, six minutes. Oh, really? Okay. Well, let's drop into that. See what happens. Because I'm really curious. Like, we wanted to see this game in the first place, and now we can. Although it looks like North Chilean G wasn't that late. Well, anyway, let's get to the match. Once the game decides to load. Alright, so... I haven't seen a lot of Top Gag or North Chilean G in a while. And we are in Cold Snap again, actually. But everyone's starting in the south side of the map. No one's trying to take the north side right off the bat. And already we're seeing mostly just harassment to the center. Surprisingly, wow, North Chilean G started really far in the back. Hokomoko decided to go for a mace rush immediately. And this might actually work effecti quite effectively. North Chilean G able to take out the initial rush of the mace rush, but it's going to be still tricky, though. Same time, Anarchist... Actually, Anakin's one of the south, interestingly enough. Oh, wait a sec. Okay, did... Wait, seriously? Okay, so North Chilean... Or Hokomoko basically just built the hover pa factory, tried to go into the mace rush, lost the hover factory, and now is trying to... Is actually doing okay. The GBC is fine because they do have a lot of metal strategies in the back. Anakin did a great job protecting the back lines, but Mumble Clan, they're not under huge threat right now. These two mazes are still in the game, but the recluses will stop them from actually doing all that much damage. And top Hoko Hoko's commander is basically the only thing they have right now. I don't really see them making another factory at the moment just because why would they? 
I mean, Anarchid has a factory. The team has a factory. Might as well just go with that factory. Have Pokemoko build up their commander as much as possible. Get a little bit of harassment. But otherwise, it's not really worth worrying about too much. North Chilean G, on the other hand, starting to expand forward, which again, I'm not entirely sure why they built their factory so far in the back, but I suppose it did help against the Mace Rush. That allowed them to get that a little bit faster. Yeah, that's the one thing I'm not sure about here. So Top Cac, at the same time, also just building up an army. Not even really worried too much about what's going on in the South Lake. Just building up an army, probably going to try to take the North the, again. I mean, they tried. It got harassed out by a bunch of fencers. But now the fencers are being forced back by the spiders here. And that should be enough time for Top Cac to start building... Er, yeah, for Top Cat to start building up over to the north, double checking to make sure that there isn't anything already built by their opponents. But no, actually, at this point, Mumble Clan has a lot of knowledge and soft map control over the north side of the map. Now, again, both players or both teams start on the south side of the map almost exclusively, so taking the north side isn't going to be a question of fighting against someone else's defense. Like, if either team had decided to build up a little bit over to the north, it would be much harder for the other team to actually claim the north. But at this point, the only. The only team actually making inroads is this Mumble Clan team. At the same time, though, the GBC coming in to make sure that Mumble Clan cannot just take the North for free. And this is actually going to be quite effective. The amount of fence the Fencer Mace combo is actually kind of scary. I mean, the Fencers will take apart basically anything that tries to attack from a distance, try to take out the Maces. And anything that tries to take out the Fencers, the Maces will fairly quickly get rid of. Although, of course, that doesn't deal with things like recluses. So there is a problem there. Also, if they start getting out of position like this, or just completely separate, these fences are, are quite vulnerable now. The redback isn't going to be coming in. Actually, it's not going to be effective anyway. But if there were glaives, for instance, they'd be able to come in and deal some damage. If there were... Heck, if there was an imp... Wow, an imp would completely destroy this. Pokemon was commanded at the same time, getting completely torn apart by a bunch of redbacks. Which, well, mostly getting rid of the commander are threatening the fencers a little bit, but the main threat is that Recluse, and the Recluse actually is doing a fine job just kiting away from the fencers. Kind of wish there were two or three more Recluses. That would actually completely destroy this army. But alas, there is not. Same time, though, Glaze over to the back side of the map. Not able to do that much damage. The fencers are able to stop them. Well, okay, they're able to get rid of a lot of wind generators, but otherwise, not do a huge amount of damage. But still, that does knock down the power infrastructure to the point that the GBC is now excessing considerably, and Momo Clan essentially has a 10 metal per second production advantage. The GBC will probably be rebuilding their energy quickly enough, though, so it shouldn't be a big deal. At the same time, there is still this giant army here, so Mumble Clan needs to wipe out this entire army in order to be able to actually win in this fight at all. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of painful. And again, there's more Rexes coming back here to try to at least stop some of the production. Unfortunately, not able to do enough damage. Does damage the Impaler coming in, but it's not going to be dead, so it's still going to be able to help out in this fight or... How about further harassment? But the main problem, of course, is this Mace Fencer Rush. That Mace Fencer Rush is going to be destroying basically everything. There is one recl two recluses. That'll be nice. But just, you need more recluses. A couple of Hermits as well, which is interesting. They're being used, if, not really used at all. I, thought, I would expect them to be used kind of to tank Fencer Shots, come in there, allow the recluses, or rather, allow the Redbacks to come in and deal boatloads of damage. And that's more or less what they're doing now, but already one of the recluses is gone, another recluse is heavily damaged. Only the hermits are left, and it's not really going to be enough. I do like these of the venom to try to take out that mace, but that's, that's still not going to be sufficient. The mace coming in here will take out the spider factory, will take out the lotus, or should take out the spider factory. Come on, that's, that is priority here. Takes out the spider factory, wipes out Mumble Clan's production, or parts of Mumble Clan's production, pretty much locking it down to top gag. North Chilean G effectively out of everything. All they have are these three units left. Their teammate Topkak, however, has managed to take a lot of the north, so Mumble Clan is still doing fine economically, but it's risky. There is still this giant... was... oh, never mind. There was the giant army, but it got wiped out. Topkak coming in a little bit late, but still eventually wiping out the army. North Chilean G... oh, they're still the commander. My bad. I thought they lost their commander. I was off there. So North Chilean G will be able to rebuild, and Topkak coming in to try to provide a little bit of harassment with loads of knights coming in the top, and these should be able to wipe out the factory. Or at the very least... Heavily restrict his production. But yeah, at this point, that factory is done. Nothing will stop it in time. So at the very least, revenge has been had for the Mumble Clan. The GBC still accessing quite a bit of metal. Hokomoko's factory is doing what it can and only has 20 metal per second being pumped into it, which is a bit of a shame, especially with the Weaver right there. Could be 27 and a half metal per second, but that wouldn't still be enough to stop the GBC from accessing. 
And at this point, losing that north side, on top of the fact that the Mumble Clan is taking most of the north side of the map and killing off Anarchist Commander, nicely done there. That is going to be it for Hokumoko, and yet that is going to take the game. Mumble Clan, despite a huge amount of pressure being applied to them at the start of the match, has managed to work their way back into this, thanks largely to taking the north and just maintaining that economy as they lost, as they lost the south side of the map, while Anarchist and Hokumoko were pretty much just caught in that one corner, and that's all they could really work with. Not to mention, again, the excess. 1,500 metal, or 1,600 metal excess, just because of the fact that that energy production was lost. That was such a huge blow. That was entirely energy income. You see, the energy income drops right about here, and you go to metal excess at roughly the same point in the map, and that's exactly where the metal excess pops back up. Because it was just a lack of energy. That was all it was. So anyway, that, I think, is it for round one. I'm not sure if Diamond Sparkles, Jasper, Flores have played their match yet. Double check. I think... I think they have. Oh, no, they haven't. We can actually do that one, too. Okay, cool. Seems like everyone's just kind of running in weird order. Yeah, we just started this game a few minutes ago. So cool, let's go in. Watch all the games of round one. Hooray! Now I don't feel like I'm leaving out any teams. And actually, that was a pretty quick round one, too. Something like 15 minutes. Considering that nothing started in parallel, that's pretty good. But now everyone's here, we should be able to get the rounds a little bit more efficient. So I don't expect I'll be able to jump between matches in later rounds. But, yeah, definitely the first round. And I think this was also Cold Snap. By total coincidence, I'm pretty sure that this match also was played on Cold Snap. And yes, it was! Although this time we see the last setup where you have one team going entirely to the south and the other team splitting across the map. Again, this is a bit risky because the center, the south team is a bit more concentrated, busy to defend. And again, we are seeing that Mace rush, Mace Halberd this time. So eastern team is definitely trying to go for using their position. While the western team spreading out, they actually have managed to maintain the center control. So that was the one weakness, that center line. That center line can be protected, then taking the map control like this, this early gambit is completely worth it. And really, this is the problem here, is now Eastern team does not have control over the north side of the map. Western team is just completely crushing it. If they'll be able to take all the north metal extractors, they're not going to lose much of anything in the process. The Eastern team, they are falling behind both the nutrition and in terms of economy. If they're at half the economy five minutes into the game just because they did not take the north, it, like I said, it's a bit of a gamble. If you go for this safe center-south setup, it's a lot easier to have your have your defenses set up to make sure your opponents can easily get in. Or at least in theory, as we can see in practice, that doesn't necessarily work when your opponent's out-economying you for 2 to 1 ratio. But the problem is when you split north-south like this, this center is completely vulnerable. As we saw in the first game, that center was actually very decisive when it came to the Eastern team in the game 1. But now it's... It's not at all the case. The fact that the Western team was able to secure the center as early as they did just means they're able to just completely wipe out everything. Taking out the fact, taking out the commanders, taking out all the economy coming in here from Floris. Didn't even get a chance to talk about what factors people were going for, but Floris' cloakies are not able to defend. And at this point, Jasper, why are you not helping your teammate? This is the time where you really need to go up there with those lances and start... Well, okay, maybe not against Glaives, but still, like, something. You have production coming on here. Actually, why even go for lances right now? Gets rid of a commander, sure, that's great. But mace, maybe? Like, early mace, get in there, take out some of his forces, or against all this stuff, a bunch of daggers, I would imagine. At this point, Flores is going to lose that Cloakybot Factory. I'm surprised they hadn't already, but there it goes. Cloakybot Factory down, and the Western team has taken the entire north side. So, yeah, when you, when you look at the way it's been set up, this is why people generally go north-south. What we saw in the first game, people went north-south. And it was actually really risky in the second game. The fact that both teams went center-south is the only reason that neither team got the upper hand early on. But if the team going center-south does immediately rush into the center of their opponent's side and start wiping out everything, just divide and conquer, there is no way that that center-south build is going to set up, or center-south start is going to work. Because they're just going to get outproduced. their opponent's going to take the north side of the map, and that is going to be game, as we're seeing right now. So yeah, I think if Jasper and Flores had just combined in a rush very early on through the center and then probably gone south rather than north because it's easier to attack because they can hit through the lake too and get the nice flank, they would have been able to wipe out everything. But they did not do that, and now they've lost to a massively larger economy. And there goes the resign pull. Jasper 
opting to throw in the towel. Flores surprisingly not actually going for it, despite the fact that they have literally nothing on the map. At all. Maybe they're just thinking. Maybe they just want to see if Jasper's able to pull this off, but no, they're not. And indeed, that is going to be it. So, right. Right as we get in, we get out, because that was the game. So we're going to be moving on to round two. And again, that should be a bit more even. So once once we get that set up, then we will have, we'll have more tournament. So stay tuned for that. Round two will be coming shortly.